How does steam travel from the boiler to the radiator? Steam and I had a love-hate relationship for the longest time. It took me forever to understand how it works. Just when I thought I had it figured out, it would do something I never expected. Welcome to Boiler Room Detective. I'm your host, Ray Wolfhart. Steam systems operate differently than any other heating system because they don't use a mechanical method to distribute the BTUs through the building. A hydronic system uses a pump or circulator. A heat pump uses the compressor. And a furnace uses the blower. Steam systems don't use anything. Instead, steam zooms through the building at speeds up to 50 miles per hour, propelled by a pressure differential, and it doesn't even require much. I'm talking inches of water column. Let's start by reviewing what happens inside a steam system. For example, I will use a Crown Bermuda steam boiler, model BSI-103, with a water capacity of 6.5 gallons, or about 54 pounds. The temperature inside the basement is 72 degrees, which means the boiler water is the same temperature. The piping and the space above the boiler are filled with air. The thermostat has a call for heat and the burner starts. It takes roughly one BTU to raise one pound of water one degree. We have to raise the water temperature from 72 degrees to 212 degrees, a total of 140 degrees. Your boiling temperature may be different depending on where you live. To raise 54 pounds of water to 212 degrees will require 7,560 BTUs, or about 5 minutes of boiler run time. This is called sensible heat. It's heat which can be measured with a thermometer. Once the temperature reaches 212 degrees, it requires 970 BTUs to change 1 pound of water to steam. When water becomes steam, it will expand its volume by 1,600 times. For perspective, if you convert a 16-ounce bottle of water to steam, the steam will fill 100 feet 2-inch pipe. That's called latent heat. It's the heat required to cause a change of state, water to steam. The latent heat is delivered to the item requiring heat, such as a radiator, and the latent heat is surrendered. Water does not like being steam, so it zooms through the piping looking for somewhere cool to surrender its latent heat and once again become water. It doesn't care about the flow arrows on the pipe. It could go forward and backward, up and down. It's like a toddler after eating sugar. You may wonder what powers the steam around the building without a blower, compressor, or pump. Steam systems use steam pressure to push the steam and the distribution cost is the loss of steam pressure. The further the steam travels, the more pressure is lost, but the loss is minimal. For example, old residential steam systems were designed around one ounce of pressure drop for 100 feet. If the steam leaves a boiler at 2 psi and heads to the radiator 100 feet away, the steam pressure at the entrance to the radiator will be 1 pound 15 ounces, more than enough to heat the rad. Other things affect the steam pressure drop through the piping, including lack of insulation or improper training of the horizontal pipe runs. If someone removes pipe insulation on the steam pipes, that pipe will lose five times more energy than an insulated pipe. This causes the steam to condense prematurely and the pressure to drop. You may only have one pound at the radiator instead of the one pound 15 ounces. This causes excess condensate buildup in the horizontal pipes, which can cause two issues. The first is it could overload the steam trap and cause it to stall, meaning no steam to the radiator or the system. The second effect is that the added water or condensate in the pipes causes the steam to condense much faster causing a ripple effect. Remember what I said, steam wants to be water, and it's lazy. It will get rid of the latent heat here rather than 50 feet down the pipe at the radiator. 
If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. My boiler books are available on Amazon, and my technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by the Boiler Room Detective channel, and I'll see you on the next case.